math problems from Olympiads. I've sometimes heard something like, oh, that's another world, or you should see these patterns, and so on. But in fact, school math Olympiad problems in many occasions do not require super specific and upgrade knowledge, and some people just do not try them because of this formed impression. In this video, I will take an example of an Olympiad math problem that was given in Moscow math Olympiad to school kids that were in their final school grade. And based on this example, I will demonstrate you how this problem that from the first glance may seem hard and unsolvable can be decomposed to the logical steps every kid at a high school can do. And hopefully, by the end of this video, you will stop being afraid of math Olympiad problems if you were before, and even will solve one purely on your own. There will be another short problem at the end of this video, so stay tuned till the end, and we're gonna start right now. Okay, let's take a look on a problem. It is a cubic equation, the main complication of which are the coefficients in front of x and x squared. They are represented as a sum of logarithms. Let's try to simplify these equations in the brackets, and we can start by introducing a set of parameters. So let's say a, b, and c, that are equal to the logarithms from the brackets in front of x squared. Then the second brackets turn to be a sum of these three, the three values, right? But what shall we do with the second bracket? The logarithms uh, there are different from the first bracket. But here we can spot the first key point. Even though the logarithms at these expressions are different, they have similar structures, so to say, meaning that the values under the logarithms and the bases are constructed from the same three numbers, 2, 3, and 5. Therefore, we can use the base rule for logarithms to write these expressions in terms of a, b, and c. Here you can tell me, wait a second. Oh, whoa, whoa, man, wait a second, man. What? But what if I do not know this base rule? Well, I know what a logarithm does, but this rule doesn't seem to be an obvious thing to me. Should I just quit? Never. Let's briefly repeat the logic leading to this rule, and you will see that you don't need to memorize it and can always derive it. So do not just memorize, think. I will explain the logic really briefly. Thus, feel free to stop the video and think about it yourself if you are not sure about some details. We start from the definition of a logarithmic function. Let's take log with the base c from both sides, then derive x and recall the definition of x. Therefore, we can write the following expression. We can do the same for the log with the base b, because in the original we should multiply these two logarithms. Let's do this multiplication, and after we simplify the equation, we end up with the expression we wanted to prove. Done. Therefore, even if you didn't know this rule, you could have derived it from the definition of a logarithmic function. Now let's come back to the original question. As discussed, we express the bracket in front of x in terms of a, b, and c. Also, we can use the same base rule but for three logarithms. I mean, there's no limit for it. And express one as a product of a, b, and c. In fact, this trick is often used in math Olympiad questions. Another form of that is, for instance, the expression of minus one as i squared, when we consider complex numbers. Again, in both cases, these tricks are derived directly from the definition as, as you could have seen, there is no spe super specific knowledge that you should have in order to do it. By uh, combining our introduced parameterization for both brackets and one, we can rewrite the original equation in the following form. Now, let's simplify this cubic equation. We put all the variables in one side, and here we can spot another key point directly leading to the factorization and ultimately the result. This expression is taught in middle and high schools, therefore I think most of pupils know it. Here you can see the proof. But also, you can kind of guess this format. You know that there is a cubic equation, thus it should have three solutions. We don't specify real or complex, for us it is important that the ultimate factorization will consist of three brackets. Then we spot that the coefficient in front of x cube is 1. Therefore, we may assume that there will be 1s in front of x in the brackets. Then the last coefficient is uh, uh, the product of a, b, and c, with the minus sign in front of it. And this coefficient is formed by the multiplication of the second terms in all three brackets. Therefore, we can guess that there can be a, b, and c with the minus signs in front. At least our guessed factorization will work for the first and the last coefficients. Of course, it's not a direct proof and just some observations, but in case you don't know this expansion by heart, you can guess about the format and then check it with a direct derivation. Do you think you got the idea and now have a motivation to solve a problem on your own? Let's go for it! 
To give some motivation, this problem was also taken from a math Olympiad, but from the middle school. You are provided with the following expression for positive values a and b and asked to determine what will be the relationship between the left and the right part. You should make an informative guess and choose between one of three options. Share your answers and solutions in the comment. Every comment will receive a response. If you like this video, please give it a thumb up, subscribe to the channel if you want to have more content like this, and ring the bell not to miss new interesting videos. Also, feel free to share your suggestions about the format and the videos in the comments. There is another category in this channel devoted to normal neuroscience research, therefore, if you are interested in science, check it out. And I hope to see you soon.